This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Hey guys, it's the Awesome Cast. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studios here in uh, Pittsburgh, PA, the the uh, the Beachview neighborhood over here. And of course, we got the main crew all with us. First of all, in studio, Katie Dudas is with us. Hi, I everybody. I just realized your title is the person from last week, so we'll fix that. <laughs> sure, I can be uh-huh. anyone. Uh-huh. Uh, but anyways, she is the sales and marketing director over at The Scare House. Very scary. We got to hang out there last week. We'll yes, talk about did. that a little later, of course. Um, and I got to fix your title because it has last week's person, and we're doing that thing. But also with us from Studio C is, uh, he's a gadget guru over Big Bank International Esquire. He is Chilla. John Chichilla. Oh, that's that's me. How's it going this week? Hey, I, I, you're, you are missed in the studio, sir. I am, I, but I wouldn't have gotten gifts if I was there. <laughs> okay, maybe you're not that missed. Uh, but anyways, <laughs> uh, good to see you. And we have the nice view of, uh, of Dormont over there. He's not that far away from us. We're still in the South Hills. Uh, represent, uh, but we any should, yes, we should we should try to shoot off fireworks one night and see if we can see each see other's it from fireworks. each other's thing. I have to climb to the roof or the next hill over, but um, but that's that's possible. That's definitely possible. I, w- I have not had a chance to ask them about roof access or try to climb on the roof since I've been here in the year uh, since we've moved in. But anyways. Uh, but this is the awesome cast where we uh, get geeky and, and talk about technology things, and we're all people that do things around technology and social media and the such. So that's why you're here, I hope. Uh, but <laughs> check out everything at awesomecast.com, um, awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com. If you want to email us, uh, tweet us at awesomecast, awesomecast on the Facebook, and, and please uh, join us on the awesomecast Facebook group where a lot of great things are happening. A lot of stories that we talk about here on the show um, actually do come from there. We we have a, a pretty hefty fan section there and, and get a lot of commentary through the week and you guys can be a part of that. Subscribe and rate us on your favorite podcast app and please watch the video versions if you would like to because some people like to put our heads really big on their um, on their TVs with Chromecast and such. Uh, you can find those versions on Facebook and YouTube for Awesome Cast. And of course, we're live every Tuesday on the Facebook page at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, and you can check us out uh, through our streaming partners, riversedgepgh.com, Saturdays at 9 a.m., as well as the405media.com, uh, weekdays at 9 a.m. Pacific Time, noon Eastern Time. So thank you to our streaming partner out there on the West Coast as well. If you want to be part of the audience, or if you're interested in advertising on the show, please hit up uh, producer Missy over there at awesomecast.sorgatronmedia.com. And you can support the show yourself if you like what we're doing, if we bring a value to you, if you're enjoying the conversation, like our good friends that do, um, over at patreon.com slash awesome uh, at the Coffee Club five dollar level, we have reaction videos of the Bumblebee trailer. Yeah. That is so G one Transformers. It's amazing. Also, we um, talk about some of the um, interesting ads in, in Katie's uh, gift here. The uh, uh, look, look at that. Ta-da! Some nice vintage nineteen eighty five Transformers comic books with the Dinobots, because of course, yes, because that's what the makes best. sense. And, uh, and of course, but thank you to our, our Patreon supporters at the Coffee Club five dollar level, Matt Weller and John Dickey DeGore, and at the fan of the show one dollar level, Michael Fedor. Uh, thank you so much, guys. You're literally helping us keep the lights on um, here at the studio. Uh, so let's get into the awesome thing of the week, and uh, let's let's start with Kitty because she's kind of got the cool one, and I'm just still on that vibe of uh, hanging out at Scare House there Friday night. Hey, so I will not be here next week because <gasps> we're opening a bar. Well, Scarehouse is where <laughs> myself personally. Oh, there we go. Yeah, Scarehouse is uh, involved with. Uh, it's called uh, the Zombie Den. It's going to be down on Market Square. If you're familiar, where uh, Miracle was located 
during Christmas time will be in the same space, uh, except it'll be zombitized. And we have zombie themed drinks, mm. and it's going to have a very cool atmosphere. Like you're in a bunker uh, during the zombie apocalypse, and it's going to be pretty darn cool, if I say so myself. Are the zombies serving you drinks? No, they will be kind of just like people who. I'm sure that's against health codes. Probably. They're yeah. kind of gross and yucky. But yeah, so that's where I will be next week. Um, and then that's uh, the actual opening day is October 3rd. Okay. And uh, it'll run all through um, October, Wednesdays through Sundays. Um, but I think it's going to be pretty cool. People seem pretty excited about it. We got a whole bunch of coverage across the board from all the local places, uh, people talking about it. So yeah, I think it's going to be a pretty cool thing and it's going to be fun. And it's and if you went to Miracle, it's uh, the layout is much better than Miracle's layout. Uh, Miracle is that the the, oy- the oyster house? Yes. Okay, because mm-hmm. yep. it, it has a big neon oyster house yeah. on it, right? Yeah, so. it's it's one of the, it's on the left side. If you're looking at the oyster house from Market Square, it's on the left hand side. It's that uh, that space there where they kind of do the lunches oh. in, in that spot there. And if you're joining us on video, there's a there's a shot of the um, the zombie den window. Yeah. Uh, oh, nice and light up and everything. Mm. I like it. That'll be nice. Super so, excited. I, I like this. I like this kind of theme thing you guys are got going on there. Yeah, you, um, Scarhouse always seems to do these uh, collaborations. Yeah. Um, yeah. This, as well. this is one we've been, it's been in the work for quite a few months where we yeah. haven't, like a lot of projects, they're like, hey, we're going to do a thing. And then we have to wait a very long time to tell anybody else about the thing. So we get stuck with these secrets. It's a big responsibility. Yeah, yeah. It's like, what are you working on? Think I can't tell you about. Okay. Does it involve zombies? Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically our conversations throughout the year. Yes. Yeah. In, 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 hey, in, you need zombies? I got a place. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, uh, the 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 largest supplies, su- supplier of zombies and zombie-related uh, peoples to the Pittsburgh area. Yes. Yep. You can probably you can probably lay claim to that. Yeah, I think so. I, th- yeah. I think it's safe to say. I specialize in zombie and zombie related products. Yes, unless you need a clown, <laughs> I got those too. Awesome, go check out Zombie Den, and there's it it a Facebook page as well mm-hmm. uh, with a few a little bit of media and uh, links to the um, the eight things to expect from Pittsburgh Zombie Pop Up Bar over mm-hmm. at the Incline. Ah, mm-hmm. cool. So go check that out. Thanks, Katie, for bringing that up. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, Chilla, what is your awesome thing of the week? So mine, although Elgato has sold the majority of their hardware off, and I can't remember who they sold it off to, but they've probably, actually really... Probably Logitech. I feel like probably uh, is Logitech. It, is it Logitech? No, yeah, no, no, okay, no. So I just feel like if anybody's being sold, to, <laughs> it goes to Logitech these days, right? Yes. Oh, no, no, no. It says now Elgato is now part of Corsair. Corsair. C-O-R-S-A-R. Interesting. I've heard of them. So um, they came out with a new snazzy little device called the Cam Link. So if you're interested in doing any kind of podcasting, any kind of Twitch, YouTube, Skype, Mixer, whatever you want to broadcast on, um, they have a handy dandy little um, USB 3 to HDMI dongle, which allows you to take pretty much anything with an HDMI out and plug it in there, and it will uh, rebroadcast that device. So I think you you have a bunch of HDMI kind of capture equipment that you use with your cameras. I do. Um, this is one that's they claim to be lag free, um, and will let you use that device as a as a live video mm. camera. Oh, that is cool. Yes. So, so oh, okay, this wow, this is so this is. This is a. This appears to be a more consumery version of what we use here because we use things like. Um, you use the Black Magic. Yeah, we use the Black Magic Ultra Studios. Mm-hmm. So, so, how much does this run? It's uh, about a hundred and fifteen. So it's comparable price wise too, though. Okay. Yeah. So now, now typically I'll get an Ultra Studio or a uh, Black Magic Intensity. Um, that'll be, uh, usually lightning, uh, if not USB three, but those don't work too well with the Mac, but this may be a more standard thing I might be able to use. Um, like when we do the public source, um, shoots like th- that's like two of those, like we just take two of our Canon cameras, plug them right into that. And then Wirecast handles the switching versus like this show is done with a full black magic switcher. Right. Um, interesting. And if you remember, um, We've we've shown the the different HD uh, devices that are meant for more game game 
broadcasting and recording mm -hmm. with voiceover. Um, if you go on that website up to the top where um, there's kind of like a menu capture stream deck, green screen and dock, mm -hmm. um, they actually have, I, <clears throat> I think, was it Alexander Cars? Um has the stream deck yeah yeah that's so something we talked about a little bit ago and that's where you can you can um have that cue things up or even be a sort of video switcher of sorts yep. as well yep and then they have the um appropriate software that comes with each so i thought it was mm. they're really they're really getting into the uh mix of of a lot of these more consumer mm -hmm. um great equipment that lets Pretty much anyone. And again, Target mostly, these are mostly targeted at people doing like Twitch streams, video game streams, things like that, right? Mm -hmm. Like I have a camera because maybe, you know, I'm, I'm a photography. Uh, actually, Alex in the chat room um, is saying this is the thing I wanted when I tried to use my SLR for something. Right, because it's not a webcam. That interface doesn't happen, right? So it, it is a nice uh, uh, solution there and you don't have to worry about the lightning thing. It seems like, it does seem like it's a more, I don't want to say dummy proof, um, but because these things do get complicated, even in the kind of, you know, Twitch, you know, consumer. It, what is our word for this? Because it's not like pro, right? I mean, and, you know, some Twitch streamers get real pro with stuff, right? But is it, is it, is it prosumer? It, it, I don't even think it's prosumer. Prosumer is like the cameras that we use here that are like $3,000 cameras, right? This is serious hobbyist <laughs> you know <laughs> I, I that's the only thing i can think of that applies and i don't and that honestly doesn't do justice to it um because if, if somebody's pro i say the prosumer the cars is saying as well um but i guess that prosumer kind of line has dipped because when you get like an 800 hundred dollar dslr you're pretty much on the level right <laughs> yeah i mean i you know in my mind I, I, even the camera i, I got that like I feel better because it's a bigger camera like we use in the studio, but I picked it up for a thousand bucks used and mm -hmm. I don't think it's going for $3,000, but that's like the level. That's how I use it. Enthusiast, um, high end. I think, I think enthusiast? It's, above a, yeah, it's above a, it's above a, your average. Just, Hey, I'm going to use the webcam that's attached. Or I'm going to buy like a, a $50 really nice mm -hmm. webcam or even a, a, a hundred dollar 4k yeah. Logitech like burrito. black magic is is for people that do video and go to conferences about video mm -hmm. is that yeah that that that's pro enthusiast so yes <laughs> pro -thusi i like that pro -thusiast. that's a that's a new word and maybe a show you better trademark that Pre yeah, trademark that cars <laughs> um but you can it's over at elgato.com so wait so it they do, 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 and, and they do have software they they have the software for the switcher and for i think it comes with this too that that mm -hmm. already has the pre-built kind of switcher broadcast to twitch broadcast to yeah YouTube. we we have that it's sitting on the kind of built in we have that sitting on this computer because we use the uh the hd60 to bring games in hdmi mm -hmm. Although funny, funny enough, I kind of need to find a solution that'll take older stuff in. Like I want to hook up a Wii or an N sixty four and stuff like that. So that's the well, next a solution. Wii a, a Wii would plug into that because we hadn't didn't we have HDMI? We did not. A Wii did not have HDMI. We you did. I feel like Wii, I'm, I thought you could get a different connector. You I had to buy. Like, you had to buy it. Eh, maybe, maybe, but it's probably too expensive to pick up because of Nintendo. Um, I feel like I'm not saying real words <laughs> anymore. But um, they do sell. You can get like HDMI to. You can get dongles that'll do the conversion for you. Let's mm -hmm. put it that way. Oh, then we get into the dongle talk. Anyways, let's move on before we go too deep into that. So I've been doing. Yeah, you know, I'm still doing the lift driving on the side here because um, it's fun. It gets me out of the office. It's uh, I, I get to meet people. Um, and tell them about great podcasts that we do here in Pittsburgh. Um, but uh, I, I was really surprised. Um, I, I did, like I said, I was out at the Scare House on, on Friday um, doing some filming. And um, yeah, I, was, I was like, well, you know, I'll, I'll get out a little bit and just kind of just make the most of my time. Now, one of the biggest issues I have is where I'm like, hey, I have like three hours and then I really need to be here in three hours. Then typically after like, if you're like within a two hour window, 
of where you need to be, you don't want to be out lift driving because typically you have no idea where you're going to go, right? Like I don't want somebody sending me all the way out to the airport when I need to get through rush hour traffic to get over to Aetna for a thing I have to do. So, you know, usually you could set a, a directional filter. There's a new filter they added for drivers that will have me arrive to a place on time. So basically, instead of just like finding rides on the way to my location, like uh, I set one up. Um, yeah, it, this is really helpful. So I'm not like out in the middle of nowhere at 3 a.m. as well. Um, if I'm like, hey, I want to be home by like 2.30, it's not going to send me all the way out to McKeesport, right? It's not going to send me, you know, who knows where. Um, it'd be a bus station pickup that sends me to IUP, right, at, at 3 in the morning. It's going to, it, it can send me the opposite direction, but not far enough based on ETAs that I'm not going to still get home by like 2.30 a.m. or, you know, or to, you know, at not by, you know, mm -hmm. the 6.30, I want to be out there to make sure I'm there on time for whatever I need to set up, right? Um, it's been super helpful, which also means if I have like a small bit of hours, I want to kind of maximize things or... You know, I want to get across town and, and, you know, make sure I have plenty of time uh, before a project or something or a meeting. Like, it helps me maximize that a bit more. So it's getting, like, really smart about that and kind of cool that that's um, – that it works, really. Um, so some fun new features on the driver side of things um, to get into Lyft driving. And if anybody would like to get into Lyft driving, um, I do have a code that will give you a bonus. So hit me up for that. Uh, anyways, so um, so that is my awesome thing of the week. So we already talked about it, but uh, hey, uh, we may not be pros when it comes to scaring people, but we know someone who is. Yay! And some of us people. have experience. Yes. Some of us have some experience here on the show. Um, Scarehouse even has a podcast to talk about all sorts of things on the business of the haunted attractions. For more, and also the Scarehouse Weekly mm -hmm. that Katie does. What was your Scarehouse Weekly? I miss, I missed it. I realized I was there that night. I'm like, I wonder what they talked about today. Uh, let's see if I even remember what we talked about. <laughs> what did we talk about? I don't even remember. I block everything out at this point. <laughs> I don't remember at all. That's sad. This is really sad. <laughs> Anyways, don't listen to me. There's a lot happening there. Um, usually, I tune in, and it's just like I don't know. Katie is sweaty in the haunt and yeah. walking around. That sounds about right. <laughs> but go check it out: scarehouse.com, scarehousepodcast.com, and check out all the great conversations they've had, including you guys did a live Q and A you did here in the studio a while back. Yeah. That was kind of fun. So, oh my gosh, how did I forget that? Hmm. Was that last week was the at the science center. When we took the oh. zombies to the science center. Your zombies have been going everywhere. Yes, they they're well traveled. Mm -hmm. Your clowns and your zombies and your misconnections. <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah, getting finally on that Reddit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there was I man that should that should have been your awesome thing of the week. I know it should have been. Sorry, so guys. there's a there's a picture of well you know we might as well do this. Yeah, there's a picture on your Instagram and I'll see if I can pull it up here for everybody on video. Um, so the story was is we ended up. Um, Etna had his 150th birthday, so they invited us to be in the parade, and we said yes. And Dave the Clown, our very tall clown, he's like 6'5", um, was in the parade, which was the first time that I've had him out in public, because I usually don't take clowns out in public. I take Bunny out, or I'll take Zombie out, but I don't take clowns out. <laughs> that seems like an interesting rule. <laughs> I know. <laughs> My job is weird. This is the decisions I have to make. Which character to take out? So we had Dave the Clown all up done up for the parade, and um, we had to drop Bunny off. <laughs> we had to drop Bunny off at Costco for a Costco visit in Robinson. So we're like, let's do something fun with Dave the Clown. And the plan was to go down the south side and just cause, you know, just run around. Uh, the traffic was really bad, so we stuck around Robinson. And there's me and Bunny and Dave the Clown. Very happy people. <laughs> Love that. And uh, we're like, all right, well, I guess we're stuck in Robinson. What should we do? And we ended up at Chick-fil-A. We ate at the Chick-fil-A, which was the fun because it was packed. Like, if all restaurants to pick, we picked Chick-fil-A. Wait, Chick wait, so they all, you guys walked into Chick-fil-A yeah, like, like that? Yeah, like nonchalant. I said, Dave, just do it. <laughs> Dave the Clown. Let's was the cow there? No, that would have been great, though. We did have two people want to come up and take pictures with him. It was pretty fun. Uh, it, was, it was good reactions. Which And then walking back to the car, two more people wanted pictures. They stopped in the middle of the road. was like, hey, I need a picture with you. So our new plan was to just kind of drive around Robinson, <laughs> literally, and Dave just like up against the window, just waving. And it was amazing. And uh, so we had to eventually drive back to the haunt. So we were driving down 376 and traffic was bad so we'd be up beside cars and Dave would just wave as we were sitting in traffic and some people liked it some people didn't 
And uh, the next day, there was a Reddit thread about the <laughs> thanking the clown on 376. And then we made their day because uh, this really clown with long spindly fingers. I'm like, oh, Dave, look at you, Dave the Clown. <laughs> That's awesome. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. So that should Dave be, I mean, like, I, I feel like there's an opportunity there because, like, Beast Man, the wrestler that yeah. we know, who's <laughs> just a caveman, has been just, like, rolling into and yelling, you know, rah, 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 you know husk, husk, husk. Uh, um, in like convenience stores and KFC, and that's become like this interesting like meme thing that's been going on. It's gone viral. And I was like, you just have the clown going in. The clown should go into McDonald's. Yeah, we thought about that. We thought about taking him into McDonald's and be like, don't worry, hey guys, you need to work. The boss is here. I was like, oh my god. <laughs> See, I, w- I wish you would have gone into like the kids play area and Chick Fil A or Chuck E. Cheese. Yeah, you gotta watch with kids and clowns and because uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> then it's like, oh yeah. Well, that's... at least your characters don't lick the kids like um Beast like Man. Beast Man does. No, no. Yeah, don't. I'm just like, oh, that's us asking for trouble. Uh, <laughs> but anyways, no all right. Well, we have some other things that have been uh, uh, thrown out here by our, our friends. Again, uh, join us in the Awesome Cast uh, Facebook group where a lot of these guys uh, uh, share this. Um, so Brandon, our friend out in Kansas City, uh, wanted to share uh, the news that, and again, uh, I think uh, we're not PlayStation people here. We're mostly, I think, Xbox and Nintendo. Um, but good to see. Like, I know that you guys have had like a PlayStation Plus where you can like stream a lot of classic games through that that you know the Gaikai stuff that they bought. That it, you know it's 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 happening on a server somewhere and everything. But apparently they've uh, updated that recently. That uh, PlayStation will now let you actually download the PS4 and PS2 games to play offline. And again, these are part of a subscription. You don't actually own these games like after you um, have canceled your subscription or anything like that. It includes games like uh, uh, Bloodborne, um, things like that. Uh, so a lot of a lot of great classics there too. Uh, so that's an interesting decision to you know after kind of really kind of uh, uh, betting on this streaming technology. You know, I mean, we talked over the years about like Gaikai when they first came out on live. And uh, kind of just this this cloud computing um, approach to gaming. Um, what do you guys think about them kind of saying, "Hey, let's let's let you guys localize it." By the way, Xbox does not offer anything like this. Like their Game Pass and everything, I think is all download, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's all download. They, I, I've heard rumor of them talking about doing a a low end Xbox that would allow you to just do a bunch of streaming games. Um, I I actually. The new, after seeing about a thousand clips of the new Spider-Man, I am definitely mm-hmm. intrigued by the mm-hmm. PlayStation. Everybody's talking about it. Like if I could, if I could either trade one of my, well, I have like two old Xbox 360s and a <laughs> and a half working Xbox. How many one. Xbox 360s equal a PlayStation 4? <laughs> And I, I mean, I don't want. The, I don't care if it's the newest one. I don't care if it's the 4K one. I don't need the one that can push VR. I just want to play me some Spider Man. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Like it, it's been only like other than like okay, Uncharted and Halo and things like that. Now they're just like, yeah, we got Spider Man, mm-hmm. and, and this is like the definitive Spider Man game, apparently. Um, yeah, they really kind of hooked a few people on that. It seems so. All right. I, also, uh, Brian Crawford wanted to share um, the all new Echo Show looks really sharp. And of course, you've been using that a lot. And there, there are a lot of Amazon announcements that were uh, um, brought up over the over last week, including a clock and a microwave and things like this. Um, I don't know, Chilla, what do you think about this? It is kind of it's more tablety, I guess you could call it. Yeah, it's it's more. Ta- the, the thing that I don't understand is. Can't you do everything on the show on the newer, um, their tablet, the HD seven mm. or whatever it is? So I always wonder, like, why not just prop one of those up? Because it'll do, you know, Alexa on demand, where you can call yeah. out and yeah. <laughs> Sorry, well, it, everybody. Well, it's 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 not so much like yeah, it's a tablet, but this is like more of an alarm clock kind of form factor. Like it's a deeper like back to it that kind of it props is, up. Right. It probably has it probably has better. Um, it, it probably has more going on for um, you know like calls and things like that. It's probably more formatted for that. Pre- yeah, again, oh, you no, have premium at... speakers, Chilla. It has premium. Like they're speakers. actually full size speakers. Look at that. 
I could I could plug in my own speakers to my my uh Yeah, you could, but this Amazon is an tablet. all in one solution for you to just stick in your kitchen without the extra wires. Yeah, that that is true. Mm-hmm. Um I like the concept, I like the idea. I'll be honest with you, I really like their what is it, the spot, the round one? Yeah. If I was going to get something for the bedroom or whatnot, I would definitely be picking up uh, one of those. It is a cool concept. I don't know. I just have enough. I have enough glass. I don't need any more screens right now. There's a 229 device. The spot is $129. And again, it has that kind of alarm clock around kind of form factor to it. Uh, I Again, I've seen it in the uh, studio of our River's Edge. And it's 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 a quaint looking thing. Um, but, but again, you can call and do drop-ins and things like that. And, and spy on the people in your studio. Mm. I like I, I even like the drop in on just the the regular dot. It works mm-hmm. and it works well. Obviously, you don't get video, but and and they read the form factor of the dot. It's very cool looking. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. It's it, as... it, they added the fabric to it that uh, that maybe you like if you're a, uh, a Google Google uh, Home user like uh, like we are here. I don't know. We and I, I'd like to hear what the sound is because the sound is definitely better on the Google Home. Oh yeah, then the dot, the, yeah. the dot. I don't think the dot they ever intended that to be. No, no. And again, it does have like an out on it that you can plug a speaker in. So, yeah. Katie, are you still? Are you still having? Um, are, are you? Still, I have her dot. You I'm have still, her dot. I'm like I'm still the anti dot. You're still anti dot. Yes. You haven't. You haven't. You haven't um, mm-hmm. connected with any other no, uh, voice assistants. Nope, sorry. Nope. No. I do have something. This is random and interesting. I don't know. Maybe. Um, have you guys noticed? I don't know if you ever watch shows on Xfinity, but a lot of times there'll be um, the Google ads, and it, it'll start out with "This is a Google Home ad," and then it'll say the words to wake Google up and do a command. And it's like one is to play. There's a Moana game on there now, I guess. Okay. And but it's really interesting. So the Google Home, I don't. I don't like. What, what triggers? Uh, Google Homes. Um, it, they must have they must have it programmed now that with there's a certain set of words they hear before they're given. A, do you know what I mean? It's a tone. It, yeah. It's a, it's it's a tone. So they they announced during the before the Super Bowl last year. Uh-huh. Everyone was wondering how the Amazon ads weren't triggering everyone's A train devices, mm-hmm. and there is a inaudible high frequency tone mm-hmm. that's played. It, um, that tells those devices not to listen for uh, a certain period of time. What would be interesting is, and here's here's your million dollar idea for all the paranoid people out there. If you could make like a little clip on button or device that would play that tone constantly, no one would ever hear it. You might annoy some dogs or cats. <laughs> um, but then anywhere you went, you would know that the those devices wouldn't listen while you were in the vicinity because they would they would be deactivated. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, if you Google like Super Bowl Amazon, why didn't she hear the commercial type thing? It'll it'll talk about it. No one tells what the frequency of the no one has at least that I found has like hacked has, it. Has has figured out what the actual frequency is. I'm mm. sure with a little bit of equipment you could, especially with the kind of stuff you have, Sorg. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, so you can you can de- there's there's a there's it's a, it's from what I've heard it's a tone at least for for Amazon maybe Google's a little different, but I would uh, I would guess uh, they'd be doing the same thing. Alex is saying that uh, we'll call it an AI dampener. There you go. See, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that can be a product for you. Um, we have a couple more here. Amanda actually has a couple. Uh, first of all, uh, she went to the beach, and the beach has VR. Um, you can check out what we're looking at. at es- Wait a minute. Esk, Esk Reality. Oh, so it's escape. escape, like the escape key, <laughs> ESC Reality VR dot com. And this is apparently a uh, kind of VR arcade that's on the beach uh, in, in some towns on the, uh, out in Delaware and Maryland. They have two of them, including, ooh, birthday parties. Uh, but uh, they're, they're calling it, <laughs> I, was, I was thinking it was escape rooms when I first, because they say uh, escaping reality. So um, interesting, and I don't know if this is just like a higher-end VR, because the ones that you see in the pictures, like these are very stock pictures that they're using here, guys. I don't see anything like potentially of, 
the actual setup here. Um, and I'm looking through the game library, um, and I don't see too many games in here that I've seen before. I've also not delved too far into, um, like, VR games that are not in, like, you know, Gear VR, I guess. Um, but, uh, oh, wait, no, there's Fruit. They have Job Simulator. They do have Job Simulator? Oh. Yeah, it's towards the top, the towards second the top. row down. Oh, there it is. There it is. Stuff like that. <laughs> like Google Maps was... Like Google Maps, Google Earth VR was um, listed in here, which is kind of interesting. So I mean, it seems like it sounds like it's kind of like a um, a uh, looking for group kind of situation, but was just with a lot of VR helmets. So hey, that's that makes a lot of sense, and that's honestly to do a startup y thing like that. That's probably really cheap to do in the long run, right? Probably cheaper than getting a bunch of arcade machines at this point. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Also, she shared with us, um, we've talked before about people hacking and putting Android in their mirrors. Um, this one is uh, mirror.co, mirror.co. Um, it is, um, according to her, what does she say here? Um, it's really cool. It's uh, I just want a mirror that gives me mantras and my schedule as I get ready for the day. Um, they're, they kind of push this as a fitness thing by the looks of it on this website. It, it's it's a mirror, and, 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 and it has a lot of interactivity to it. Um, I, I don't know. The apartments that they, they uh, are showing it off in are a lot sleeker than what mine is. So <laughs> I don't know how realistic that is. And I don't see a price on it. And they're, um, um, I think this is it, a pre-release, isn't it? It's f- um, $1,500. Oh, there it is. $1,500. Oh, and don't forget to pay your monthly subscription. <laughs> plus a 12 month subscription or you can pay as low as 164 a month for 12 months to pay it off unlimited access to mirror classes so there's 39 dollars a month your mirror membership will give you unlimited access to a growing library of live and on-demand mirror classes man i hope they don't suck and also can i get ddp yoga as a part of that ddp just diamond Dallas page just shows up and yells at me in my ear it, 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 I want I, I want something like what we were looking at before, right? Where there's more than just workout classes. I want a bunch of yeah. This thing is big pushing as a workout class. So so you have video and you get to look at yourself <laughs> as you work out. Yeah. Right. Is that oh, what we want? Man. You do you just stare at yourself intently when you hit the gym? Yeah. Dutters. Obviously. Yeah. <laughs> Working on my fitness, making sure. Yeah. yeah. It's just so weird. You can check that out at mirror.co. It's and after that first 12 months it's it's $40 a month. Hmm. Well, that'll be that's interesting. My mirror doesn't work cuz I've canceled my subscription. <laughs> oh, it's my. just a stupid mirror <laughs> now. <laughs> yeah, it, it has to at least still work as a mirror, right? So I'm, I'm that'd sure be amazing. It's mirror, but. <laughs> and you don't even get the mirror part of it anymore. It's like a, just a frame on your wall, a chunk of something on your wall. <laughs> it's just an absolute brick. Hey, guys, you know what? You don't have to subscribe to and will last you just as long as it takes you to eat it. It's our friends at SliceOnBroadway.com right up the street here, right up the OG, the original on Broadway in the Beachview neighborhood. We have pizza. We have tacos. We have Lucha Libre. Uh, but we got Slice on Broadway and also their other locations over at on uh, PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates, Carnegie PA, and the East End. Riz keeps sending me pictures of him at Slice on Broadway, uh, and I've been really enjoying that. Go check him out. Thank you to those guys supporting Pittsburgh Podcasting with the perfect pepper pizza. SliceOnBroadway.com, PGH underscore Slice on the Twitter, and let them know the awesome cast sent you. All right, we got some stories here. Chill has got some stories here. Yeah, don't forget it's uh, Ignite this week, so Microsoft Ignite. came out with I, I, I understand Office 2019 is out. Exciting. Yes. <laughs> get all your Word updates. What? I what? guess we get those automatically because we are on Office 365. Do we have any updates You already yet? have them. Do we those have are them? The, that, that 2019 is only for people that are on, like, the white box Oh, yeah, have we had version. it, and this is just the box version? Yeah, this oh, is just... Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. You're all on right. the cloud. You already live in the future. I mean, this is, this is you know, you're supporting businesses. Some of them, they're still running DOS programs sometimes because they don't want to upgrade the software. So, I mean, of course, you're going to provide them with a box copy of Office. That the rest I think of a lot of schools schools offer box copies to students. There's mm-hmm. there's a number mm-hmm. of – it's that pay for it once and run it until 
it doesn't work anymore. Yeah, yeah. Well, I won't get into my philosophies on Word. <laughs> but, 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 um, one thing I will say, and this is this is a magic time for a, for a number of operating systems. Um, this is the magic time for Windows. So if you're a Windows insider and want to get off the insider train, mm -hmm. um, and I included a link in the article from Windows Central on how to do it, um, if you don't jump off Windows Insider or iOS or Mac OS for that matter, if you don't jump off at the right times, you end up pretty much having to kind of reinstall your machine. Oh, um, so, uh, so this th is this is your this out is point time. Yes, there's two times per year for for uh, Windows, and this is this is one of them. Mm, I know. Um, is it out yet? Um, uh, Alex was asking about. Whether he should up update his computer to Mojave, I am nope. not going to because I'm scared. Mojave came Poop. out yesterday. Yesterday, I am scared poopless that it, things are not going to work that I need for my business. So Mine, I am I'm, not going to. I'm on the beta. Update. I'm on the beta, but I have the GM notifier. Well, I uh, again business uh, side. I have software that um, if it doesn't work when I upgrade, I need to drop about four hundred dollars to upgrade it. Ah, yeah, and I don't, there's no more support for new operating systems and things like that. So that is a decision <laughs> that I have to make uh, at that point. There's, a, you know, reasons why say I disabled all the updates on this computer. We do this show, or that computer over there has Windows Seven and uh, Windows Update turned off for reasons because you do X task should not do anything else. Therefore, don't necessarily need all the updates that everybody else does. Mm -hmm. Right, I'm not. We're not doing regular things that the security updates would defend against. So, um, okay. So we have. So you're in the magic time. You're in the magic window here. Um, and I see that there was a couple other things that they talked about that they're launching here soon, right? Yeah. So, um, and this was so they launched white the whiteboard app a few months back, I think we talked about it on the show, mm -hmm. and they had promised a web version and an iOS version. The iOS whiteboarding app came out today. Mm -hmm. um, if you like whiteboarding, and, and as geeky as this sounds, as much as I do, go check it out because I really like their whiteboard app. You can share with others. You can connect it to your Office 365 um, accounts. Uh, I highly, I, I really enjoy their their whiteboarding app, and it's, it's uh, across at least ios and windows right now i'm guessing it's going to come to android and a couple others mm -hmm. and it also works on the phone which was which was pretty neat so awesome definitely go check that one out especially because if you're already paying for the office 365 account it's free and it works without the office 365 i just don't think you can save and share and we can actually cope um, co-create so we can we can simultaneously we'll have to give that a try on the show sometime we can yeah, you're supposed to be able to simultaneously I don't know do you really want Dutters loose on a drawing <laughs> application you've seen what yes. happens in the dock yes yes <laughs> yes yes it's a great idea <laughs> I, think, uh, I think we should give it a whirl oh boy oh boy that could be a gold or something yeah. um <laughs> it kind of have to be right yeah 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 um after dark <laughs> Gold after dark. <laughs> Daughter is like to draw certain things when she can draw, as I can tell by the dust on my car most of the time. Oh yeah, I'm very fast too. Yeah, you just like <laughs> look away. We're like, how did that get there? <laughs> Anyways, um, <laughs> so uh, the, the other one I'm excited about, and I'm hoping I, I find an office that has this because I actually I think it was the Health and Humans Human Services Center. No, that's not right. Or CDA. C I don't know. Some important government building downtown that uh, I was filming a panel at had Surface Hubs, um, which are just it's just like a giant TV on the wall that has like that's made for Skype and business things and touchscreen and everything, right? And, and yeah, and white. The, yeah, they launched the Whiteboard app for that as well. Yeah. Um, and it has it. Yeah, it has a bunch of. It runs actually a different version of Windows. Okay. Um, the the Surface Hub that's out today and the Surface Hub two that will be coming out Q two of next year. Okay. Um, I like the look at this. This is the one that's like more of a um, indistinct panel, and then you could actually take several of them and put the panels together, and they'll kind of um, you know coordinate in a multi uh, display setup. Yeah, except for if you buy those now, mm -hmm. that 
all that feature, all the cool feature functionality they're showing doesn't work till 2020. <laughs> oh, until 2020? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What? So it requires the new window that all that cool flip around, join them together. Mm hmm. Um, you know, the thing in every marketing material picture we see for it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's going to require that's going to require an update called the Surface Hub 2X and that'll be in 2020. Oh, the no. other thing that I can't glean from the article is the and I think this is actually interesting. The Surface Hub 2 has a removable um processor cartridge. I don't know if this is like the little thing you could slip in your N64 so you could play that Star Wars game. <laughs> but, <laughs> oh, the memory upgrade. <laughs> yeah. Um, but th th there's a processor cartridge and the device can be upgraded and there's question of if to actually use that new feature functionality in 2020, do you actually have to also pay for a processor upgrade? Hmm. Um, but I don't know. All in all, I, what I thought was pretty cool about this device is they definitely slimmed it down, and it can go on an easel. You can use that today. You can use the basic webcam today. Um, Microsoft Teams, their Slack competitor, works with it uh, out of the box now because they've brought out a Teams update. Um, so, there, so there's there are don't get me wrong, a lot of pros to the Surface Hub two. Um, but that being said. Um, a, a lot of the cool demo feature functionality isn't going to be available till 2020. Mm -hmm. mm. Is somebody you know is buying that and bought like four of them, and they're just really pissed when they can only use one. <laughs> you know, yeah. somebody's getting bit by this, but Microsoft will make its money. You know, you know how a platform you know is uh, is making it when you've released an Angry Birds version on it. Uh, Magic Leap is releasing ha makes uh, has their debut of Angry Birds on the platform. It looks cool from the promo videos, and again, haven't really. I mean, there's some dev kits out there, but anyway, we haven't really gotten our um, eyes on Magic Leap, I guess. Um, but I mean, it's kind of what I, I guess you would expect from an AR um, Angry Birds. Um, it, it, you know, the the. the the, the the blocks are kind of the the structures are kind of building on top of like your coffee table and you have a slingshot that that uh, lines up with the controller and that's how you play it uh, but you and you can move around the structure too apparently so um that looks like fun like that's a kind of i don't know it, it just seems like the most compelling stuff on ar is stuff that with blocks <laughs> that's getting knocked down at this point right that does look super, super cool. And this mm -hmm. is, they, they, it, I hope it's as good looking as the video they created because I was really let down with the, the Microsoft equipment. So hopefully they, they do this one right. Mm -hmm. um, Alex is saying he made his own version of Angry Birds as a board game mix, mixed with uh, Jenga blocks. I think they do release that there is like an Angry Birds like that. Right? Jenga blocks and golf balls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you so, break a window, kid. I don't know. Have you? Yeah. Have you seen anything else that kind of like proves that uh, this uh, magic leap is a real thing? I haven't seen anything else. I mean, I, I think obviously if they can hit the the Minecraft, if they can hit hit a number of those types of games, then they're they're going to be just fine. Hmm. Uh, we talked about a while ago about Capcom was re-releasing uh, certain Mega Man games as classic cartridges, special colored ones. Um, there's a nice blue shaded uh, Mega Man 2 cartridge, uh, two versions of that. Um, and they're also doing Mega Man X for the Super Nintendo. Uh, they are limited to about 8,500 units each, and they're going for about $100 each right now. Hmm. Yeah. Um, and they've done this before, of course, with like Street Fighter 2 and things like that. Um, that is a hell of a collector's item. <laughs> um, but just an update that that is released, and you can get it over at the uh, I Am 8-Bit um, website, too. Uh, so it's it's interesting. I, it, it's weird because they also talk about, like, um, um, uh, looks like a, 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 a new game, uh, Fork Parker's Crunch Out game. And this is nothing new. We've had our friends from Mega Cat Studios that have done a lot of kind of uh, cartridge releases as well. 
uh, there's there's still a pretty pretty thriving um, community there for these like kind of new games on old hardware. Um, she's got to play a lot of them at uh, at uh, Replay FX this year too. So, um, is there anything else about the Echo lineup worth discussing here, Chilla? Not that I. Saw. I mean, we should point out, and this has been talked about at a lot of uh, other shows I know we listen to. So there is a microwave. There is a microwave. This is for it, real. It, it, it and the microwave is interesting. I don't know. I, I'm not too lazy to punch the buttons, and I already have to put the thing in there. There was a good point. I think <laughs> it was uh, the Tech News Show um, that, that that talked about it. The idea is then because we talked with CC Busy about how they're using Echo to um, one notate um, childcare things like a diaper was changed, but also to instruct the how-to to properly treat and, and change a diaper or something like that, right? So uh, the, you know, the one idea was going around of like, hey, I'm going to, um, you know, hey, Echo, I'm, a one, I'm, I'm making this can of ravioli. And, you know, you have to like go so far and then like, you know, mix it so it's not cold in the center and things like that. Like it could actually prompt you the next step in putting something together, I think that could be interesting. Or even just having Echo in your kitchen and not having to put a dot somewhere. Yeah. <clears throat> I'd rather have, I've seen where it's built into the light switches. I'd, I like, I like that concept. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I guess it would be interesting if I could say like disable microwave when like I'm not around. So my kid doesn't, the house, that could be but... good. That could be good. Either way, it's something else that's enabled that's going to lock, roll into all your other stuff. There's a clock. <laughs> There's also just a straight up clock. Uh, one of the one, one of the interesting features I heard is that you know you can set alarms and stuff to it. I think, but also that it will. It's a physical mechanical clock. I haven't seen a picture of this thing yet, um, but I've heard so much about it. Uh, but when daylight saving time comes, it will actually physically change the clock, and you don't have to turn it back. That's cool. That's almost worth it right there. So maybe maybe it's time for Katie to take another chance at um, a talking buddy. Talking buddy. With Alexa. <laughs> Be my friend, Alexa. Exactly. Uh, there's a blue one. Um, there's <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> uh, I think I'm in something else because these ones look like it, it looks like they're like fake echoes like that are different colors. What are these echo buttons? Wait a minute. What's echo buttons? Is this a thing? Is this a thing? Wait, are they the game buttons? Oh, that's what are they ordering are. Ordering things. Gaming companion for your Echo. Oh. They're like fifteen dollars. Yeah, so you, you can play like trivia games. Okay, so it's like a buzzer Beep, boop, yeah. kind of thing. So like if you're doing like a a jack pack or something. So <laughs> did you see? Did you see the one that puts a uh, puts Alexa in every car? I thought that was a pretty cool. Yeah, I was hearing about that too. So, um, yeah, this is if uh, you know, like me, I have arguments between my Ford Sync and my Siri <laughs> all the time in my car. Um, so, like, it would kind of like you know, it, it attaches it to the Bluetooth, right? Um, so it's more integrative. Um, so that could be that could be interesting. <laughs> so it, yeah, Bluetooths it it Bluetooths to get internet connection off your phone, and then Bluetooths or can actually i think be its own self-sustained speaker mm. if your car doesn't even have because i don't even in our one car i don't even have bluetooth so um i thought it was interesting but to your point so i can not only have an argument with siri i can also argue with with Alexa. yeah which one is not listening to you properly right yeah. uh it, it kind of gets to that point with, with, with mine you know where um i didn't understand that it's like i said Turn on Bluetooth. And it's literally just my conversation with it is just turn on Bluetooth so I can go talk to the other thing. So the fun thing happens when I say, hey, mm -hmm, and I'm talking to my watch, but my phone also comes up, but it takes longer because it's on the Bluetooth. And then I end up double texting something sort of similar to my wife. <laughs> right. So, yeah. That's that's a fun thing. Or that time I called like Slice on Broadway with three different devices. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> well, these are the growing pains, I guess, as well. Hey, I want to give a shout out to our friend. He's out there in the chat room and he supports the show and you should support him. He's putting together the puzzle of uh, design and media. 
um, from branding to print to digital projects. Alec can do logo. Alex can do Alec. Alex. Alec. Baldwin? No. Can do logos, mm-hmm. uh, merchandise, websites, and uh, photo and video projects. Check them out at alexandercars.com or alexcars.media. That's K-A-H-R-S, alexandercars.com. And I think he um, he was um, kind of working on his branding when we were having that conversation earlier in the show um, where he wanted to be called. Let me see if I can pull it up here real quick. I'm sure I can scroll through this chat room and vamp enough. Um, where it's like, yeah, can we work on that uh, spot? Prothusiast level services at a consumer price point. Can we put that in the copy, uh, uh, producer Missy? <laughs> Oh, is it in there? Oh, there it is. Yeah. There it is. It's in the copy. I wasn't ready for that. So um, go check them out, alexandercars.com. Guys, PodCon is this weekend. Oh, yeah. Um, So uh, um, I'm going to be on the panel there for that. This is going to be a part of International Podcast Day. Uh, Me too. And Katie's there too. Me too. Don't forget about me. (laughs) <laughs> I, was, I was leading into you <laughs> also represented plus we're going to do a wrestling mayhem show nice. um i'm double checking with my guests we're going to have two other wrestlers that also do podcasts that are going to be part of that um we're double checking their schedules are actually good uh but anyways <laughs> i know it's going to be a lot of fun there's going to be a lot of uh, uh shows there's going to be a few shows that are going to be uh live on stage we're at the spirit lounge and also there's kind of a podcast alley where um other podcasts are going to represent they're going to have tables set up and some will be uh trying to record uh, their their own podcast at their 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 uh, tables and everything and uh, other ways you know you can discover a lot. The list of people that have signed up for this is amazing. A lot of podcasts from the Pittsburgh area I've never heard of before, and uh, it's going to be cool to see uh, who shows up and and you know what kind of stuff is represented there and discover some new podcasts and and and, and all of us discover each other really from the sounds of it too. Uh, so it's going to be a lot of fun. It's this Sunday um, starting at I believe six o'clock over there at the Spirit Lounge. Um, you can go check out, look up Pittsburgh Podcan, PodCon. I want to say another event um, over there on the Facebook page. And of course, we have it linked, I believe, in the uh, the uh, uh, show notes as well. And that's that's open to the public, correct? That is open to the public, yes. Okay. Unfortunately, I, I won't be able to attend, but I did send a few people that were interested in mm-hmm. podcasting that way. So hopefully they find find what they're looking for should be a lot of fun should be a lot of fun uh so go check out and we uh, look forward to see you guys there and of course we'll be back here next week 7 p.m eastern time for the awesome cast over on our facebook page if you miss the show or want to see some other stuff that we record around here uh we've been doing a live stream on the sorgatron media uh facebook page twitch periscope uh, wherever it's good to just drop in and see what's going on and maybe sample other shows that we might be producing around here like our friends at pittsburgh current um uh, uh, the uh, uh thrifty podcast we just did a, a live recording with them last week a uh, special edition with uh, um, a guy from uh, mr arm from uh, the trumbull Mar- manor joined us showing some interesting weird stuff some of it was sharp some of it was taxidermied uh, but it was a lot of fun so, and uh, check all that out in the other shows over at SorgatronMedia.com. Katie! Yes, hi. Where can you find, uh, people find you? Uh, I, Kate Marie PGH on Instagram. That's usually where I'm hanging out. A lot of it. zombie pictures these yeah, days. Yeah, yeah, a lot of... <laughs> Tis the season. <laughs> Tis the season. I take pictures, selfies. Take awkward selfies with my zombies. That's what I do. There you go. And then Chilla on the Twitter is at Chilla... ChillaTech.net? At Chill on the, yeah, and John Chill on the Facebooks. And I'm actually Chill of 579 on the Instagram. <laughs> Not 369? <laughs> 579. <laughs> oh, boy. Which I'm interested to see because did you see the two guys that originally started up Instagram resigned this week? I did, yeah. So keep, so keep your eyes peeled. We may have to bring up new handles on a different service. No. <laughs> I don't think they've had much say in a while. Uh, so what I'm saying, what I guess my point is, that I think that I bet you they go off and create another. Oh, uh, mm. no more. Yeah. I don't know. They might have. They might be done with that. I don't know. Uh, it may be another application that just does picture posting, and that's it. That's it. Right. And then people go back to screen capturing their their notepad. <laughs> Yes. Thank you, Producer Missy. Keeping things straight and putting things in the notes that sometimes I don't read because 
multitasking uh <laughs> for helping out during the show thank you to our chat room everybody hanging out ex- including alexander cars and everybody else has popped in throughout the evening thank you so much for being part of the live audience if you're on here live we'll be uh tuning in for wrestling mayhem show uh otherwise check you out on the podcasters thank you our awesome audience you guys have an awesome week This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.